Okay, so we're going to take what we learned about calculating the pH of weak acids and bases, and we're going to apply it to titration curves. So let's check out this titration curve and see if we can figure out what's going on here. First of all, before we've added any base here, we know that the pH is somewhere between 3 and 4. This tells us that it is a weak acid. So we're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, an AOH. So in order to get the initial pH, we're going to do just like we've been doing with the weak acids, and we will do Ka is equal to x squared over the initial concentration, and then the pH is equal to the negative log of the value of x that I calculated, just like you did in the quiz there. So now we can calculate the pH here. Let's go to the next point that you should be able to calculate by the end of class today. This is called the half equivalency point. That means that the amount of weak acid is equal to the amount of its conjugate base. So what happens is, as you're adding OH, this is NaOH, so it is made up of Na plus 1 ions and OH minus 1 ions. The Na plus 1 ions are neutral. I'll go over in a minute why that is. But what will happen is these OH minus one ions are going to look for that weak acid here, which is HA, and they're going to pluck off an H plus to produce water. So we can find the pH here because the pH at this particular point, at the half equivalence point where half of the acid has been consumed, is equal to the pKa. You might say, well, I don't know what the pKa is, but I bet you can guess. Who can guess how we figure out what the pKa is? What's the formula? What do you think? Well, pH is negative log of H plus. Uh, the negative pH, 10 to the negative pH. Um, that's how we would get to the H plus from the pH, right? But how, what do you think the formula is to calculate the pKa? The negative log of Ka. So we got negative log of Ka, and that's how we're going to get the pH. So there's two points that we've already learned. Now I'm going to go on to this third point here, and this is called the equivalency point. This is the point at which all of the H pluses have been plucked off the weak acid, and all we have left behind are A minuses. So we have exactly the right uh, amount of H pluses and OH minuses, and they combine together to form water. We also have our NAs in here, but those are neutral. If you notice, at my equivalency point, I do not have a pH of 7. You will not have a pH of 7 at equivalency point unless it's a strong acid and a strong base titration. Let's talk real quick for a second why that is. Remember, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. 
So super strong acids have super weak conjugate bases. Let's explain why. Well, in the definition of being an acid is the ability to donate protons. The definition of being a base is the ability to accept protons. So if you have a really, really, really weak acid, it's not going to dissociate very much at all. What that means is its conjugate base is really good at taking H pluses. So the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So much so that the conjugate base of a strong acid is what we consider neutral. The conjugate base of a strong acid is what we consider neutral. Let's explain why. So when you have a strong acid, you write a single arrow because you don't have any HX anymore. You have 100% dissociation. So that means that X does not have the ability to grab onto H pluses at all. That means that X does not have the ability to accept protons. With no ability to accept protons, he has no basic properties, so he's neutral. Now, we know our six strong acids, so the anion of a strong acid is not necessarily a conjugate base, it is neutral. So let's list them. Our six strong acids are hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sometimes chloric acid. These are considered neutral. Which one did I leave off? Sulfuric. Sulfuric acid. Let's let's list him off to the side so you can see why he doesn't get listed with here as neutral. Because only his first proton is acidic in the strong sense. So only his first proton gets released a hundred percent. Then I'm left behind which H HSO4 which is not neutral. HSO4 minus one, the bulfate ion, has an H plus still to donate, so that makes it not neutral. So these are the anions of strong acids that are neutral. We can actually list them. The other thing that is neutral is the cations of strong bases. So that's a good, we could list those also because it's any alkali metal or any alkali earth metal. So they're group, group one and group two cations with a hydroxide. So you can list any of the cations from group one and group two, and those will also be neutral. So lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, so on and so forth. We won't list them all, but any of the cations from group one and group two are also considered neutral. That means that they're always spectator ions. So let's look at our list here. Some of the ones we know are quintessential spectator ions that never do anything are listed there, and that's the reason why. They have no ability to react with water, so that can, makes them neutral. Here is weak acid pH. Here is pH equals pKa. We'll just list this. And here we have the conjugate base of a weak acid, so it is going to be a weak base. That's why my pH is 
not at seven. So here we're going to have a weak base problem because we'll have some weak base. We'll ignore sodium because he's neutral. He's not, he's just sitting there doing nothing. So all we have in solution here is A minus and H2O. So this now becomes a weak base problem. So that means that we can get the pH there using the same thing we did before. Kb equals x squared over initial concentration. This time, the negative log of x gives us the pOH. And then in order to get the pH, we just take 14 minus pOH. So weak base problem there. If you're only given the Ka here to start the problem with, that's okay, because we know that we can use the Ka to calculate the Kb by taking Kw minus Ka. Kw is the water dissociation constant. Ka is the acid dissociation constant. Kb is the base dissociation constant. When we're doing problems like this, the Kw we're going to use is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. I'm going to add a little caveat to that. Kw, Ka, and Kb are temperature dependent. It's an endothermic process, so it's temperature dependent. So if you see a Kw where they tell you Kw, is 2.86 times 10 to the minus 14. That's cool. Roll with it. All that means is that the temperature has been changed. So these are the three spots that you need to be able to calculate the pH at. This is the pH of a weak acid. This is the half equivalence point. where the pH equals the pKa, and this is the pH of a weak base that we've already learned how to do. You also have the tools in your toolbox to calculate the pH at any other given point on this titration curve. You've already learned how to do it. We're not going to focus so much on those, though. That's because it's not going to be on the AP exam. Doesn't mean that you're not expected to know it. So first year in chemistry, they would expect that you know that, but it's not in the AP exam, so it's not going to be a focus of ours. Those are the three spots you definitely need to know. Let me just review for you. If we do a strong acid, strong base titration, you're going to have two different possibilities. If we start with a strong acid, and titrate it with a strong base, then the pH at the equivalence point is going to be 7. This is what it would look like if you take a strong base and titrate it with a strong acid. The equivalence point is going to be at 7 also. If you take a weak base and titrate it with a strong acid, like HCl, you'll have a pH up here. This will be a weak base problem. 
and we'll do the same thing. KB is x squared over initial con concentration. Negative log of x gives you the pOH. And you get the pH by taking 14 minus the pOH. Here, at this point, is where we have no OH left over, and we have no H plus. So it's a, at the equivalence point here, where you've added just the right amount of HCl to neutralize it. And that's going to be a weak acid problem at that point. Remembering that if we are only given KB, we can get KA with KW over KB. And then the pH will be the negative log of X. This is also the half equivalence point where the concentration of the weak base and its conjugate acid are the same. So it's just flipped over. <clears throat> 